Hi everyone, welcome to the second lesson in the Unit 2 National 5 Chemistry course. Um, today we're going to have a quick look and just define firstly what type of molecules we're actually dealing with because all of the molecules within this course or within this section of the course are called hydrocarbons. That's the name and we need to know the definition of a hydrocarbon and the different families. So hydrocarbon, hydrogen, the first part. Carbon, but self-explanatory there. Carbon, that's where our name is coming from. So hydro from hydrogen, carbon from carbon. And the definition would be a molecule made up of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. So if you've got a molecule that only has carbons and hydrogens in it, then it can be classed as a hydrocarbon. And we get lots of different families of these hydrocarbons, and we'll talk about that in a wee second. But the first family we're going to talk about is going to be the alkane family. Now, the alkane family have carbon to carbon single bonds only. So between any two carbon, there are only carbon to carbon single bonds and the rest of the valency, or the rest of carbon's valency, is um, taken up by the hydrogen atom. So the rest of carbon's valency is taken up by hydrogen atoms. Now I'll show you what I mean by that. If we have a look firstly, if we only have one carbon. Now remember our prefixes from before. Prefix for this is going to be meth. If I have this, I'm going to have carbon and it's going to be bonded to four hydrogen atoms only because there is only one carbon. So there are no carbon-carbon single bonds in here as there is only one carbon. But all of carbon's valencies, carbon can form four bonds and there are four bonds to hydrogens. Remembering capital C, capital H's, all of my bonds in between them. The name of this alkane is methane. If I have two, if I was going to draw this, I would have my carbon bonded to my carbon. And I know that my prefix for two is eth. So the first thing I do, I see eth two carbons. Each carbon can form four bonds in total. So here's one, three more for each of these. And each of these is filled with a hydrogen atom. So that's us filling carbon's valencies by adding in hydrogens. The name of this alkane is ethane. Moving on, prop. We have one, two, three. This end carbon already has one bond, so it needs three more. This middle carbon already has two, so it needs two more. And the end needs three. And so we have all of our valencies filled using hydrogen atoms. All capital C's, all capital H's, all bonds print. The name of this, as you might have guessed, is propane. And we continue, so you know the prefixes from 1 to 8. And we would do exactly the same thing if I wanted octane. I would have 8, oct is 8. I would have 8 carbons in a row with bonds in between them. And then I would go around and fill all of those carbon valences with hydrogen atoms. You'll see the names of these. Ain, ain, ain comes from the name of the family. The name of that family are the alkanes. And this is how we would draw full structural formula. Okay, so full structural formula. We don't need to worry about shape here. So you'll know from bonding, we don't accept this as the shape for a methane molecule because methane's tetrahedral, which we went over in the last video. But when we're just drawing these, we tend to draw them in straight lines like this at the moment. So this is the full structural formula for the alkanes. You need to be able to draw full structural formula for any of the alkanes. 
But let's move on from this. There are a couple of other formulas that you'll see that you get asked to fill in. So if we take the full structural formula for, let's go for butane just now. So I'll do it a little bit bigger so that we can see. Okay, four carbons, this is butane. Four carbons, this carbon has one bond, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to add in all of my hydrogens. Making sure they're all capitals, they're all at the ends of those bonds. Nice and neat. So this is full structural formula, like we already said. Full structural formula. You might be asked to write the shortened structural formula, shortened structural formula. Now my advice in to do this is you take each carbon in turn and you cover the rest of the carbons. So here I see CH3. So I'm going to write down CH3. I'm going to move on to my next carbon and I'm going to cover the other carbons next to it. That is CH2. Then I move on here. CH2. And then finally, I get to my end carbon here, which is CH3. This is what we call shortened structural formula. I am no longer writing in all of these bonds. This is shortened, not got all the bonds in there. I do still have all of the carbons and all of the hydrogens. I can shorten this even further and I can write something called the molecular formula. Okay. And all this wants is the same as your formula from unit one. It just wants an idea of how many carbons and how many hydrogens I have in here. So firstly, let's add up our carbons. One, two, three, four. This becomes C4. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. H10. This is my molecular formula. My molecular formula tells me how many carbons and how many hydrogens I have in my molecule. Using this, you should be able to write the full structural formula for methane through to octane. You should be able to write the shortened structural formula from that full structural formula. And then you should also be able to shorten that further and give me the molecular formula for my molecule that I'm speaking about. So that should be in a position to do that. The last thing I would like you to have a think about is, is there a relationship between these? Okay. Is there a relationship between the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens? I'll post that at the start of the next video, give you a chance to have a look. It's well beyond PowerPoint, you'll be able to see it, but I'm going to leave that for you to have a wee look at before the next video where we'll look at these in a bit more detail and about things called branched alkanes.